Only eight people hold this most prestigious honor, and only two of them received it in their lifetime. We bet you can't name them or what they did to earn being awarded honorary American citizenship. Here's a quick look at what honorary American citizenship is and isn't, and the eight surprising people who hold the title. Let's dig into this. First, let's be clear that honorary citizenship is very different from becoming an American citizen. For people who have traveled to the U.S. and want to become a citizen, it's a multi-years-long road including a list of requirements and passing exams many natural-born citizens might fail. But we're talking about honorary citizenship here, an award that does not give rights or responsibilities. According to the State Department, it takes an act of Congress, a presidential proclamation, or both to be granted honorary citizenship. There is only one requirement, and it's a big one. Only an individual who is not an American citizen and who has done a deed for the United States or the world so great that the President or Congress believes they should receive the highest honor in the United States, honorary citizenship, may receive this award. On April 9, 1963, Congress voted on Public Law 88-6, which authorized the President, John F. Kennedy, to declare proclamation that Winston Churchill receive honorary citizenship. Churchill was, of course, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom during World War II. His list of accomplishments are too far and long to go into here, but we can say without Churchill, World War II would have been very different war. His dedication to the freedom of liberty of the world throughout the war and his entire career was recognized. Churchill was 88 years old at the time and reportedly watched the special ceremony on television while his son was president at the White House Rose Garden and accepted on his behalf. President Kennedy sent Churchill a one-of-a-kind honorary citizen's document designed to look like a U.S. passport. Churchill, who had been given so many civilian and military awards, we won't even try to list any of them, except maybe his Nobel Prize in Literature in 1953, would later write that this honor was, quote, without parallel, end quote. He is one of the only two persons ever to receive this award during his lifetime. Raoul Wallenberg, a Swedish diplomat stationed in Hungary in 1944, Wallenberg found creative ways to save as many Jewish people as he could. He rented properties and called them Swedish libraries or research sites, granting them and the reported 10,000 people who lived in them diplomatic immunity. He also gave out a special Swedish passport, granting immunity. There is a story he once climbed onto the roof of a train filled with prisoners headed to death camps and handed these passports out through the windows until he was forced to leave or be shot. Wallenberg disappeared after the Soviets liberated Budapest. It was assumed he was arrested and imprisoned in the USSR, but this was never confirmed. Even though the Soviet government released documents in 1957 stating he had died of a possible heart attack as a prisoner in 1947. Many witnesses have claimed Wallenberg was seen in Soviet prisons and psychiatric hospitals until as late as 1987. Russia sent a package of personal items found in storage, including his passport, to his family in 1989. Raoul Wallenberg was made an honorary U.S. citizen October 5, 1981, by President Reagan. British couple Hannah and Thomas Penn were recognized for the founding of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and for their work in the public good, which heavily influenced many U.S. laws and institutions. In the time when many colonies were extremely restrictive, 
the Pens had a slightly more modern idea of what society could be in the New World. The resolution for their honorary citizenship listed their devotion to freedom of religion, commitment to free education for all people, regardless of race, gender, or financial status, and the Pennsylvania judicial system. Hannah Penn was also recognized for her leadership of the Pennsylvania colony for six years after her husband died in 1718. President Ronald Reagan proclaimed the couple honorary citizens in 1984. Mother Teresa is the only person besides Churchill to receive honorary citizenship during their lifetime. And what a life she had. She already had a Nobel Peace Prize and Presidential Medal of Freedom when she was made an honorary U.S. citizen in 1996 by President Bill Clinton. Mother Teresa founded the Missionaries of Charity, a religious group that had 4,500 nuns in 133 countries in 2012, all working to better the lives of the poor. They ran soup kitchens, orphanages, clinics, schools, and hospice homes for the sick and dying. She became a celebrity in the later years of her life for her work with the poor orphans in Calcutta, India. She ran the missionary's charity until shortly before her death on September of 1997 at the age of 87. She had been working with the poor since the age of 18. Mother Teresa was canonized a saint in 2016 by Pope Francis. The United States might not even exist if it weren't for the Marquis de Lafayette. He was a French general in the Continental Army during the American Revolution, and he advocated for the fight for American freedom with the King of France constantly. He harangued his king for desperately needed troops and supplies, and his efforts resulted in the full support of the French in the war. Lafayette's fearless leadership at the Battle of Yorktown was critical in winning the war. He was offered citizenship in 1784, and much confusion about that remains to this day. However, in 2002, Lafayette's contribution to the creation of America was recognized with the title of Honorary American Citizen, awarded by George W. Bush. Casimir Pulaski was a Polish Revolutionary War hero, known as the father of the American cavalry. When he arrived in America, he wrote to George Washington, stating that he had come to live or die defending freedom. He became a Brigadier General, leading troops in numerous military battles. He even saved George Washington's life at the Battle of Brandywine in 1777. On October 9, 1799, while leading the French and American cavalries at the Siege of Savannah, Pulaski was mortally wounded. He died two days later, having given his life for freedom as he had said in a letter to Washington. He has been an American and Polish hero ever since. President Obama awarded Pulaski honorary citizenship status in 2009. Bernardo de Galvez was a Spanish military officer and governor of the Spanish territories in Louisiana and Cuba, who became a hero in the American Revolution. He risked his life to provide intelligence to the American military. He would also provide supplies and military support. De Galvez led an army of 7,500 troops made up of Spanish, French, African American, Mexican, and Cuban citizens all fighting for American independence. With incredible bravery, de Galvez defeated the British in the battles of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Mobile, Alabama, which cleared British forces from the lower Mississippi Valley. He then did the same in Pensacola, Florida. His actions left the British without military bases along the Gulf Coast. For his bravery, de Galvez was posthumously awarded the title of Honorary American Citizen in 2014 by President Barack Obama. So there you have it the eight incredible people who hold honorary American citizenship. Let us know what you think of this list in the comments. Who do you think should be at it? Thanks for watching. Hey, here's another Dragon Den video you might like. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. 
and you can hit the notification bell if you'd like to know when our videos come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.